And we are live. Hey, family, how you doing? Carrie Ann Stimson here, JMMB. Good evening. As I normally like to start out with the word happy. Happy Tuesday. Wow, what an Easter weekend that we just ended on. Uh, probably an Easter weekend like most of us have never seen. And we are here again bringing you another JMMB Goal Getter Live. As we've committed, JMMB is here with you, providing you with the information and the content you need to navigate this COVID-19 crisis. And, 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 and again, we're still getting adjusted. We always been talking about, boy, when we get out, we're gonna get back to normal. There's now a big question, what will normal look like? There's so much going on, but we've been taking your feedback, which we thank you for. And we are giving you the information you need to help navigate this crisis and what you will and what you will look like and what life will look like perhaps when it's all over. And we're very, very happy to be bringing you a very special topic. It's not in our primary line of business, admittedly, of course, JMMB, we are a financial institution. But again, we're providing you the information that you have asked for and that you need to navigate. Hey, guys, I'm seeing the comments coming up. Hey, Richard, oh, good evening, my family. Welcome, welcome. Drop a comment, say hi, guys. Tell us that you're here. It's not quite nine o'clock yet, so curfew hasn't officially started, but we know everybody is kind of hunkering down at home, and we thank you for joining us this evening. It's going to be an awesome discussion where we're going to be talking about how can you build and monetize your personal brand online in the digital space? It's an awesome topic. Hey, Stacey. And why it's an awesome topic, and it's been causing quite a bit of discussion in the social media space, is that pivoting is now the order of the day. You know, what we've been seeing with the job losses, unfortunately, coming out of the impact of this crisis, businesses have been impacted. As a result, jobs have been impacted. People are looking at other ways to earn new business lines to go into. And what does that mean? It means recognizing the way things have changed and how they're going to look different one, differently once COVID has passed, which we hope is sooner rather than later. And what's been happening out of that discussion is now everything is online. If we thought life was digital and online before, which it was, it's even more so now. And it's going to be even more so when this is all over as we find new ways to live and to go about life. And building your personal brand and learning how to monetize, aka make money from your personal brand, is what we're going to be discussing tonight. And we have two awesome ladies who are experts in the field here to break it down and have the conversation here tonight. And we're very happy to have them. Let me jump and introduce them right now. So the very first guest is, boy, well, she is a friend of JMMB because she's always supporting things we do and have, and we're very, very happy to have her. She's actually one of our valued partners. We've used her company, Gary Communications, to support us on a couple of major initiatives, most recently being Elevate. Uh, 2.0 that took place in January this year where they, where they did an awesome job in supporting us with all the communication. But she personally, as a, as a communications professional who calls herself the PR chick, she <laughs> knows exactly what she's talking about. And there she is. Hi, Naomi. Hi, Carrie. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you so much. Loving the hat, looking very chic on the curfew and all. It's wonderful, wonderful. Listen, this makes me feel like I'm going somewhere, so I'm showing up. Why not? That's that's how we roll. That's how we roll. Thank you so much. She's Naomi Garrick, everybody, of Garrick Communications, a.k.a. she's a PR chick. And then the second guest tonight is also a special member of the JMMB family, always supporting things that we do, of course. And she, of course, has a very interesting story to tell as well, because many of you know her originally as a former Miss Jamaica, right? Uh, she's your Jamaican girl. You also would know her as a TV host, as an event host, if you follow her on her, what I call her favorite uh, social media platform, probably she'll say, which is Instagram, you know, she's out there hosting perhaps most of the events across Jamaica. But she has an interesting story to share because she's also an online brand strategist that she's added now to her repertoire of skills. And she, of course, is happy to share with us this evening. She is Terry Carell. Hey, Terry. Hi. How are 
are you doing, Kerry? Hi to all the viewers. And Naomi, you do look chic. I'm just saying. <laughs> she does. She does. Hi, Terry. Thanks for being with us. I mean, you, you both of you ladies, we are so happy to have you. And, you. you know, um, you know, we know why we're here. We're going to be talking about building and monetizing your personal brand. But, you know, before we went on here live, you know, we just want to acknowledge everybody. Yes, you've seen lots of highs in the comments. You know, hi, Naomi from Bridget. Oh, hi, everybody. Terry, yay! You know, we're just loving the love coming from you guys. We really appreciate it that you have logged on. So, guys, this is going to be an awesome conversation. And guess what? Even if you don't think you need it now, you may just need it. So call, WhatsApp, text, tab, share, whatever. Whoever you need to talk to, tell them to come over here. There's curfew. There's nowhere to go except around here getting some awesome information from the team at JMMB and these two fabulous ladies, Terry and Naomi. So let's just jump right into it. I mean, yes, we're here to discuss building your personal brand and how to monetize it because, you know, there, there, there's nothing going on but the rent. Um, the reality is that, you know, we really have to just acknowledge what's happening in the space right now. And, you know, before we would have come on here, I didn't check because we're so busy getting ready. Maybe finished right now. The prime minister, certainly the, the government of Jamaica, the, through the prime minister's usual and regular COVID briefings, uh, has basically announced a lockdown of the parish of St. Catherine, effective 5 a.m. tomorrow. So after 9 p.m. tonight, essentially, uh, no resident of St. Catherine can leave St. Catherine. And it's, it's, it must be sort of shock and, and must be causing quite a bit of concern amongst the residents of St. Catherine and the business owners. Because, you know, all of the details surrounding what a lockdown means, you can certainly go and visit the GIS website and follow Andrew, um, the right honorable Andrew Holness on his Twitter page and so on. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's a very, very difficult time to say the least. And the prime minister actually said it, you know, we were always calling for a lockdown. Let's lock the place down to contain the virus and know that some form of a lockdown is here. He actually questioned whether people really knew what a lockdown meant. Yes. But yes. what this whole COVID crisis has really brought about is this confrontation with change, right? <laughs> change that was forced upon us without any sort of notice. So we knew that COVID was perhaps coming to Jamaica as it made its way across. We anticipated a health crisis. I don't think we anticipated the economic and financial impact that it would have had on so many hundreds of thousands of Jamaicans and, 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 and scores and hundreds of businesses. It's crazy. And I wanted to just start out by you ladies sharing because the reality is people probably look at you and you look like you got your stuff all together, right? Yeah. Uh huh. And the reality is you both have been impacted by what's going on with COVID. Who would have thought? People don't know. And I think Terry may have started to share some of that on her platforms and, and, and likely Naomi as well. But I'd like each of you, lady, just to kind of share where it's at for you right now and what shifts are you making with respect to your own businesses and your own personal brands at this time to deal with this change. So this is a word that Terry actually uses a lot, which is to pivot. And we're all in this space where we have to figure out what's our pivot. And for me personally, I've been impacted as a business owner and I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, the owner of Garrett Communications, which is my PR agency. I'm literally responsible for the lives of my employees. So with something like COVID-19 happening and a lot of the companies that we work with, we support their marketing department through PR. Um, when there's no marketing happening and not much PR, there's not much work for us. And so we have to figure, figure trying to figure out every day, how can we still add value to our clients during this time? How can we problem solve and solve some of the problems that we're having? How do we still get them some kind of positive exposure during this time? And in some cases, we already have clients that have either canceled our retainers for the year or have put our retainers on hold. So we have to be trying to figure out almost every day what's our next step. And so that's been very interesting for us. Um, one of the decisions we made early out was that we were going to close our physical office. 
because we really can work from home. But also, if we don't have the revenue coming that we'd normally have, that means we can't pay our rent. And that's the reality of the situation. It's pay rent or pay employees. And I'd prefer to pay my employees. So every day we are still trying to figure out what to do. Um, but, you know, we'll get into talking about the opportunities that are still available, but we're all trying to figure it out every day. Thank you, Naomi. And that's really very sobering, you know, and as an entrepreneur, I just want to acknowledge that you, you're not only thinking about yourself and your business, you're thinking about your employees because they got Absolutely. bills too, you know what I mean? And so Absolutely. it's really, it must be very challenging, but at the same time, you know, we applaud the way in which you've been very proactive around looking at, okay, what are the opportunities? And you know, we just want to underscore that, which is why we're having this discussion, looking at opportunities that exist in building and monetizing your personal brand. So Terry, over to you, what's been happening with you, girl? Right, thank you. So uh, for persons who follow me on LinkedIn, they would have seen a post I would have done a couple of days ago and it was really confronting what this means to me. So for persons who don't know me or know me, they know that I am basically a freelancer. I'm a contractor and I'm contracted to host events internationally and locally. And these events are usually large audiences. Like this is what I do. And so because of COVID-19, I literally saw Paris cancel, Bahamas cancel, Barbados cancel, Domrep cancel. I saw all of these events literally just, just cancel, which meant that I had to take a step back, which is something that I would recommend to anyone who now realizes that they have to pivot and they have to change. I understand the fear. I understand the uncertainty because I was the one asking myself, well, what do I do now if that was my core competency? But I had to step back and I had to breathe. And I had to think about this. I said, Terry, you've been going through pivots all your life. All your life, you've literally had to do something else that you are not formally trained for. And I said, this is no different. You can do it. And so what I've now started to do is I've started to think of all the archived knowledge that I have and that I have gained over the past few years. I've started to think about all those messages that I've gotten from persons saying, would you teach public speaking? Would you teach us this? Would you teach us that? When are you going to do a seminar? When are you going to do a webinar? And maybe now is the time for a lot of us who are sitting down on archived knowledge and talent and skills to start putting it in the form of webinars, eBooks, courses, classes. I think that is where a lot of us might need to turn um, our attention to. Thank you, Terry. Um, you know, again, it's 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 shocking because I was just saying, you know, you know, we're used to Terry on Instagram in those fabulous dresses, hosting right. all these events, and overnight, literally, you know, not just it's Jamaica, gone. but the it's entire gone. region. Yeah, that that's over, and we are sure it's going to come back in some way, shape, or form. But we don't know when, we don't know how, uh, but you know, the fact that you've just had to respond and to pivot, you know, is really sobering. And I think, you know, as an audience, we can connect with that, that this crisis is impacting so many people in Everyone. so many different ways. And again, because we're now really laser focused on the online and digital space, we always were, but now we really have no choice. How can we leverage the opportunities in that space? And so that's the discussion. You know, Nikisha is saying, Terry, I feel like you're picking on me. <laughs> what, we're mashing the corn? <laughs> of course. And I do that from time to time. So I apologize in advance for draping up anybody tonight. It's all good. It's all good. You know, we're, we're here just feeding off of each other. You know, let's hear in the comments, guys. If you are thinking about building and monetizing your personal brand in social media, let us know. You know, because we want to hear, we want to hear, you know, what questions you may have or even what tips and ideas you've been using and thinking about. Feel free to share it in the comments because we're going to move into our first question. And I'm going to direct it at Naomi, who, Naomi, could you just start off? Because not a lot of people are actually even probably au fait with what, pers what a personal brand is when you said to build your brand. So could you just kind of level set and start out by telling us, what is my personal brand exactly? And why is it important? Why should I even be putting it on display? Sure. So the, rea the reality is, Kerry, is that we all have a personal brand, whether we believe it or not. Our personal brand is simply our reputation. And I would say personal branding 
is a couple of things. It's how you see yourself. It's how the rest of the world sees you. What do people say when you're not in the room? But more importantly, it has become what Google also says about you. And that's why we're going to talk today about how do we show up in our online spaces and how can we monetize those opportunities because the rest of the world is already online. So you need to be there too. And a lot of times people are making decisions about you based on what they see in an online search before they even have the pleasure of meeting you in person. And so that online and offline brand becomes super important. It's about you being your most authentic self but it's also about you showing up when it really matters. And that should be all the time. Because what we find sometimes is that people can be one person online and one person offline, but at the end of the day, you're still the same person. So you can't really separate your personal from your professional brand. It's one brand, it's your brand. And you have to guard that reputation as best as possible. And it starts by how are you showing up in these different spaces? What is the type of experience you're creating with individuals when they get a chance to interact with you and your brand, whether by hearing about it through word of mouth, whether by interacting with you in person, or how they are exposed to you and how they experience you in an online space, whether it's through Instagram, Facebook, a live webinar. What is the experience that you leave with someone? Thank you, Naomi. So basically, I mean, what I think I'm probably even picking up is that even when we're having this discussion, a personal brand is not just important to an entrepreneur, it sounds like. It really should be important to anybody who expects to earn an income either from a salary or from a client in the case of a business owner, owner correct, Naomi? I, yes. Oh, sorry, Terry, let me just wrap up here with mm -hmm. Naomi. Am I picking that up from what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. And the thing I would add to that is that one of the important things about your personal brand is that you have to figure out what differentiates you from someone else. And to me, it starts with getting clarity on who you are, understanding that unique value that you offer, that you offer because of your journey, because of your experience. Like example with Terry, when she shares her story, she's had so many different experiences that have led her to this point where she is right now. That is all a part of Terry's personal brand. But you also have to figure out how do you communicate this brand to your ideal audience? What are the problems that you solve specifically for your audience? Thank you, Naomi. Terry, you have had something you wanted to raise? Right. The only the only thing that I wanted to add, because uh, Naomi explained that perfectly, was the, the fact that we have to get over the mindset that when we speak about a brand, we're speaking about the big brands, like your Oprah Winfrey's and your Apple and your Amazon. And you figure, no, man, when they talk about brand, they're talking about big brands. But look at me and my little work and my little talent. I think we need to just stop playing small. And we need to realize that before those brands became super brands, before they became big brands, they started in a basement, in a kitchen, in a garage. They started really small, but they had to have a particular mindset to tell themselves that we might be small now, but we're going somewhere. And so we can't wait to get to the CEO level to then say, let me show you what we've got. You actually have to start putting in the work, laying the pipelines to actually get to the super brands that we all see and know and either love or hate. So I think we also need to stop thinking about brands as huge and celebrities and public figures and start acknowledging and owning and claiming that every one of us, regardless of where we come from and what we do, we're all brands. Everybody has a brand. That so is a takeaway, to, people. Right? That's interesting, too, just to add to what Terry said, if you don't mind, Kerry, is that right now, even the CEOs, a lot of individuals make their decisions about going to a company based on the personal brand and reputation of the CEO. So it is something that is so important. And companies could be losing out on great talent because of the reputation of the CEO. Absolutely. So we have to be aware of that as well, how it affects all those different spaces and everybody from the gardener. Well, I like to tell everybody that you are the brand manager for the company that you work at. Any, any, anywhere you work, you become a brand manager for that company. Once you're wearing their branded shirt and you work for their company because you now become a part of their brand and their culture as well. And I think a lot of people don't understand that.
Thanks, Naomi. And thanks, ladies. You know, I'm getting some great feedback here in the comments. Nikisha also got her corn mash. Thanks, Naomi. I needed to hear this. You know, you ladies sending me to do some homework. That's what we want to hear about yes. the brand. You know, and everyone. Lots of homework for you. Absolutely. And it's great. It's great. Hi, Roshan. Good night. Welcome. Welcome. Hi, Shireen. Welcome. I saw Desreen from Trinidad and acknowledging Boogie. Big up. Thanks, Boogie, for tuning in from Twitter. You know, acknowledging that the gig economy has always been a big income earner in, in, in other countries. This conversation supports how oh, are we Jamaicans tapping into that? That's an awesome opportunity. And that is actually a great segue into our next question, which I'm gonna you know turn into Terry's um, direction. You know, what are the benefits or the advantages of identifying or being clear about your personal brand? There's there's so many, but the ones that I will start um there's the one I will start off first is trust. If you are able to build a very nice, authentic, clearly communicated brand, you will start to garner the trust of your, your fans, your followers, your audience, your community, whatever you want to call them. And there's nothing in this world that trumps your loyalty because those persons eventually become either your clients, they become your collaborators, or they become your cheerleaders and your champions. They will go out and tell everybody else about your brand. Number two, I would say it benefits in terms of networking. So a lot of us don't have a lot of reach where we are, especially if we are not recognizable or maybe we don't have big brands. We may not have a big reach, but certainly when you start to build your brand and your brand starts to take shape and take form and people start to buy into it, you start to network and enter into areas and arenas that is global. I think we need to remember this is a global digital fast moving market and so because i was able to build my brand my brand i now had persons reaching out to me from all over the 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 world it will now allow you to meet the right people get into the right spaces and to collaborate with even bigger brands and push you into spaces that will even what is the word will will, will galvanize your brand even more so i think you want to get the loyalty you want to get the trust you want to get the network and naturally if you build your brand really what you are doing is you are creating opportunities for yourself in areas that maybe you haven't even yet considered and that is something that i have experienced personally great and i love that point because again even in a time of crisis where people have to be thinking about change and pivoting for those people who would have invested enough into building their personal brand from before they actually could kind of be at a and at an advantage at this point Sorry. is they needed to pivot. I just wanted to segue onto part B of that question, Terry, because maybe if you could give us, I mean, we said five, you know, in the questions in the, in the preset, but what are kind of like the five things I should be kind of doing right now, you know, in terms of when building my personal brand that I should be thinking about right now? Okay, I have like 10, but you get your ask five and I'm going to give you five. And Naomi actually touched on some of them. So I'm going to give you my five C's, right? The, the first one is character. Before you jump into anything, before you determine what you're going to do, who you're going to help, I think you have to have a, have a very good idea of who you are, what your core values are, what are your principles, where is your brand integrity, what is it that you're going to stand for and what it is that you're absolutely not going to tolerate. So number one, I would definitely say is have an idea, please do some retrospect. What is your character um, saying? What, what is it that you really care for and what you stand for? Number two, I'd say competency. Naomi kind of touched on it. It makes no sense that you start a brand online and it's nice and it's polishy, but then when people actually meet you, what happens is that you're completely different. You actually have to be competent. You have to have the gift, the skill, or the talent. And it does not mean that you have to have a master's, a PhD, or a degree. It simply means that you need to have the expertise and you have to have the knowledge to become an expert in your field. So you need to be competent on all forms. So it is the what do you do? So who are you? What do you do? Number three, the cause. So why do you do what you do? A lot of persons need to stop comparing themselves to other people and trying to create brands that look like other people and they have to ask themselves, why is it that I am doing what I am doing? And that is your cause. When you have figured that out, the question now becomes your community. Who are you serving? Who are you trying to help? 
your vibe attracts your tribe. Who is it that is going to be your client, your ideal client, your collaborators, as well as your champion, um, your champions and your cheerleaders? You have to have a good idea of who your community is because you can't be everything to everyone. Or if you're trying to be everything to everyone, it's going to come tumbling down. And finally, I would say communication. So if you know who you are, you know what you do, you know why you do it, and you know who you're serving it, it's not going to make any sense if you cannot efficiently communicate this. What are the channels you're going to use? You're going on Instagram, Twitter? Are you going to have a blog page? Are you going to have a, a, a website? Are you going to do it through storytelling? What are your formats? Video, photos. It's the how that is really going to help persons to understand who you are and why they should buy into what you're creating. Those are my five C's. Thank you. Love that. Character, competency, cause, community, and communication. And communication. Love and that. And this has to be done consistently. Yeah. Yeah. It can't be, you know, one thing one day and you, you flip flop in, you know, you got to be authentic. I, mean, I know we're going to explore that further. I want to just stay with Terry a little bit before I go back to Naomi, because we're now moving into that segment of the conversation when we're talking about how am I to be communicating, you know, my personal <laughs> brand. And you spoke about communication as the last of your five C's, right, Terry? And you talk about your audience. How do I choose my audience? Because, of course, well, I'm a marketer, so one of the first questions you ask in marketing is who's your target audience, right? Mm -hmm. So similarly, as a brand, your own personal brand, you have to have a target audience that you're speaking to, right? Mm -hmm. How do you choose it? How do you find your audience? I mean, what does that even mean in the context of a personal brand? Right. So it depends. Right. And I think it depends on what it is you're doing, if it's a product, if it's a service for me, because I am the face of my brand. It becomes a little bit different, but it's important for everyone to be very aligned with who they want to work with. So to, to make it very simple for a lot of persons who might be watching, it isn't always easy to choose your audience. Everyone says it, it doesn't always work that way. When I first started posting and really using social media, I didn't have a clue of what my audience was. I just knew who I was and what I wanted to attract. I knew the type of community I wanted to cultivate, which are people who are empowering, they're uplifting, they're very nice. So I don't have trolls and I don't have persons like that. But I wanted to be a space and create a space that was there to entertain, to educate, and to learn. That's really what I wanted to do. What eventually started happening was while I started to now tell people what I do, and I started to share with people how I do what I do, my audience started to basically uh, filter out itself. If somebody wants somebody who ray or, you know, who who want to be an Insta model, they're not going to probably stay on my page for long because I just don't cater to that particular audience. So what I started realizing happening is that I started to invite or attract a lot of corporates. And this is without me really knowing what my audience was supposed to be. I started attracting corporates, um, parents, persons who are trying to do career pivots, persons who wanted to emulate uh, what I represent. And I know I'm not capitalizing on that audience because now I have divided my audience that I touch in different areas. For, so for some people, they can choose their audience and figure out how they're going to serve them. For me, my audience came to me because of what I put out into the universe. And now I am able to segment my audience based on my touch points. So I think it's hard for me to explain to each and every single person how they should treat their 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 audience but once you find it i think you have to stay aligned to that particular audience so you don't send um mixed signals great thank you for that because can i add to what terry oh, said i'm gonna go to you next naomi go yeah. ahead okay so i get that question a lot as well and in marketing we use this term brand avatar that's where you actually try to really define who your ideal customer is or your target audience and you can use that same strategy when trying to decide who your audience is. So I have a business coach and one of the things she said to me, which I say all the time is that people won't know what you have to say until you open your mouth. So you need to first understand, as Terry said, you need to get that clarity first on who you are and who do you want to serve and what problems do you actually solve? Because you want to be speaking to an audience that you can actually solve their problems because they're coming to you for a reason, whether it's to get 
a word of wisdom or to buy a product or service or to get some inspiration or whatever it is. So you have to first identify what do I have to say? What value can I bring to my space regardless which platform I'm on? And then I think an easy way to actually find out more about your audience as well is to find out what are their problems. And you start by just asking those questions. So even right now, I am testing out different platforms for my own brand. I started off on Instagram. I haven't really explored Facebook. But over the last two weeks, because I'm trapped at home, I've been really taking my own advice and being more engaging on my LinkedIn platform, which I hope we really get to delve into LinkedIn because there are so many opportunities on that platform if you're positioning yourself in the right way to receive the opportunities. And over the last two weeks, I've been more consistent on the platform, more active, more engaging, and just providing value, 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 not expecting anything in return. And already, two of my posts have been trending in personal branding across LinkedIn. Um, I'm getting so many comments and feedback, and I'm also getting requests for consultation, for coaching, for personal branding, just because I'm putting myself out there. When I get responses from individuals, that's how I start to actually realize who my audience is. Another simple way is if you're on something like Instagram, check the analytics, look at your insights. That will tell you right away, do you have more women or men following you? Where are they from? What time do they check in on you? What's the age group? So that also helps to break down in a very basic way who some of your existing audience already is. But you can actually get into more specifics when you start to ask them the right questions to see if you can actually solve their problems. All right. Thank you for sharing that, Naomi. And, you know, I just want to say, because I see a question coming in from Twitter from 911 Latoya. And I'm going to ask what the 911 is for. But she asked <laughs> a very interesting question, as I think we just need to reset the conversation. When she said, how do you know if this is a field for you? And just to be clear, guys, we're not speaking about a field. So we're not saying we are to build a personal brand because you want to start a business. If that's what you want to do, it, then fine. What we're saying in this conversation is that every one of us, we each have a personal brand. And what we're talking about is how do you establish and build your personal brand, first and foremost. And if you would like to monetize that brand, that's an extra step. But at the very least, what we're saying is you have a brand. Your reputation, your name, your line of work, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're employed, is a brand and what we're talking about is how to build it how to put it out there so that it creates opportunities for you COVID-19 crisis or not and then we'll go into monetization I want to jump back to Naomi because Naomi kind of started to go into it because now we want to move into how do I communicate you know my, my personal branding online and you know with all these platforms because you started to talk about linkedin and instagram you know how do i choose which platform if you kind of just give us some quick tips i guess on how do i communicate my my personal brand sure so i'm touching my face i'm so sorry guys so of course there are a lot of platforms available to us and i think it's important to test and measure and so i'll just tell you from what what i do and what has worked for me so I started off with Instagram first, which to me is such an amazing platform. I mean, you literally get to have your own TV show, guys. So if you are clear on what you have to say or the value that you want to bring to your audience, even before you've truly identified them, start by choosing a platform and sharing the information on the platform. And it can be tricky because I actually have an Instagram page for Naomi Garrick, for the PR chick, and for Garrick Communications. And even though I have three different platforms, they speak to three specific things, but they're all tied back to me. So you're going to see the same Naomi showing up on Naomi Garrick, on the PR chick, and on Garrick Communications. But Garrick Communications is focused on PR services. So if my audience is interested in PR services, they know Garrick Communications is where they're going to go to get that information because I don't really talk that much about Garrett Communications in my other spaces. If you want personal branding tips and information, then you follow the PR chick. That's where I provide that information. If you just want to know more about me and all the things that I do, then you follow Naomi Garrick. 
And so I direct people to the various platforms that I'm on, even just on on Instagram, through the different pages that I monitor and manage. And why that's important, so for anyone that's online that has a business brand and they have their personal brand, which is all the same, I do recommend sometimes that if you have a specific product or service that you're offering to separate the accounts because most of the times, and this has been through my own experience, when I post content specifically related to personal branding on my Naomi Garrett page, even though that's the page that has more followers, the, in, the, the engagement is super, super low. So I've realized that people are just not interested in following me for that information. But when I share personal branding information on the PR Chick page with a much lower following, the engagement is so high, the shares, the highlights, the comments. And so I've realized that it is important in that online space that if you have a particular product or service to try and separate the two because people that were originally following you just because of who you are may not necessarily be interested in all the awesome things that you have to say or sell as it relates to a product or a service. LinkedIn now, I mean, if you are a business professional and you're serious about business, you need to be on that platform and not just using the platform as a resume holder, which I used to do and which I think a lot of Jamaicans do. I realized the value and importance of LinkedIn when I started going to a lot more international conferences and people stopped accepting my business card and instead asked if they could scan the barcode for my LinkedIn page. And then they'd connect on LinkedIn. And I was like, wow, I didn't, I didn't actually didn't realize that people use the platform other than to share their resume. But there are opportunities because a lot of HR recruiters, um, headhunters, CEOs, and decision makers are on that platform making decisions about whether they should hire you or not. So if you're not showing up in that platform, if you're not engaging, if you're not communicating, commenting, and using that platform to really position yourself as a thought leader or to showcase your expertise, then you're missing out on a lot of opportunities that could have your name on it, but they can't find you. Thank you, Naomi. And I think that's a great, great nugget because what a lot of people don't realize is, again, the platforms are very, very different and how they are utilized is very, very different. Right. You know, I'm I'm a big um, I, I, I'm a big user of LinkedIn, not not really um, put, putting a lot of content out there. That's <laughs> another conversation. That's why you ladies are ministering to even me tonight. Right. Not just our viewers. But the different platforms serve different purposes, you know, so LinkedIn yeah. is not the place to post your puppy dog, you know, who just had some puppies, you know, um, it, it's not the place for that. Instagram probably and as you said even though even within Instagram you can have different types of content again and for different types of accounts for different types of purposes again depending on how strategically you want to position your brand and I want to hop back over to Terry because it's kind of like as we're talking about the how like for someone like me I'm not an entrepreneur at the moment I don't have any near-term plans to be but I'm still very passionate about building my personal brand right right so Terry how does how for those of us who are employed and people may say you know oh, our lives are not as exciting as you ladies right but you know how do we show up online given our offline lives and you know the temptation to think that you know we're boring really we really do have nothing to offer what yeah. advice you know to some the, people like us the first thing i'd say is number one we're not unidimensional we're not one dimensional that's 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 not how we are as individuals we are multidimensional and we are multifaceted. So even though some of us might be nine to five employees and we might work in a particular for a particular company within a particular industry, it still does not mean that we do not have thoughts or that we do not have skills and talents in other areas. In fact, we we know that most persons figure out that they have a side hustle when they realize maybe they bake very well. Maybe that is something that they do very well. Maybe they realize that they have a talent where they're able to spot errors in documents. It may sound boring. It may sound stupid, but that is a skill and people require that as a proofreader. So for me, what it is, is stop looking at yourself as this one dimensional creature and start asking, what are all the areas that you touch? What are all of the areas that you feel comfortable speaking about? Because on LinkedIn, I've never done a post that says, book me for your event. Never. 
The how I communicate with persons is that I'm a storyteller. I am going to weave things into that conversation. I'm going to try to do open-ended questions. And that is for persons, again, it does not have to be in the job or the role that you do at work, but ask other questions. So for example, very easy thing. I realize that a lot of people are now doing a lot of events, not events, meetings online. I also realize in the space that there are people who are not getting up, not washing their face, brushing their hair, or putting themselves together online. Yes, I'm an host. I'm an international host. Yeah, I'm an event host. Yeah, okay, I'm a speaker. But I have an opinion about this that is timely and relevant. So I jumped on my video and I said, let me tell you something. We must show up online even if it is online we have to put ourselves together that post did so well across instagram and linkedin and it does not take away from the fact that i have other things doing because one people could resonate with it people could understand it people who didn't think about actually putting themselves together started to say oh my goodness i really need to so i think what people need to do after they figured out the platforms is you can have the same content going across all platforms. Just repurpose it according to how people behave on those platforms. And lastly, when you're speaking to these persons, you need to be communicating in a manner that resonates with people because people are people. They have the same issues, same problems, same frustrations, and a simple uh, caption or post that you make can have a lot of people nodding their heads and saying, I totally agree with you. So don't stick yourself in a box show all the different spaces, show in all the different spaces what you can do while still remaining at the, the core of who you are. Wonderful, I like that because, you know, what it's really saying, again, going back to the whole point about being authentic and recognizing that you have a voice and you have something to say. And again, irrespective mm -hmm. of whether you are an entrepreneur or you're employed, you have skills that you can bring to the table and there's value that you can add. You know, I want to jump back to Naomi real quick, too, because I'm seeing a couple of questions come up in the panel about as we talk about the different platforms and things you want to say and, 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 and so on. There's a concern that some people have about, OK, how do I make that step bearing in mind what has already occurred? So there are some people who say, look, I'm an introvert. I've never really been into the digital online social media thing. How do I get started? Yes, Terry's bubbling. And then there's another person who says, well, I already kind of have a persona out there, but how do I really know, I guess, bring some more structure around it, using the platforms more effectively? And maybe some people just need to make a change. You know, you know, God is a forgiving God. Some of us may have started out a little rough around the you know, relate to their, what the history had there because, you know, the internet never lets you forget. But we're at a stage where we're like, look, you know, um, I want to make a change. I want to pivot, you know. Naomi, what's, what's your advice around just kind of, you know, putting that structure in place, getting started or making that shift? Sure. So it always goes back to the three things, clarity, value and communication. No matter what you're doing, you have to start by getting that clarity of understanding who you are, what's important to you, what are your values, what are your beliefs, almost like what's your mission statement, right? Then you need to think about your value. What value do you bring, whether it's through your profession, through your life experiences? What problems do you solve specifically? And then three, which we're going to talk about, the communication, where and how to communicate this to your ideal audience. And so if we start with something as simple as doing a Google search, if you were to Google yourself right now, would you be happy with everything that comes up? Do you even know what would come up on a Google search? And the thing is, a lot of people, before they get to meet you, that's how they might get to interact with your brand first, by whatever comes up on Google. So you need to start thinking about, if someone were to meet you online for the first time, what would you want them to say about you? And that helps you to start thinking about what kind of content should I be positioning? Because I saw questions about content. You need to first understand who you are and the value that you offer so that you can start now thinking about, okay, this is what I do. This is what I'm knowledgeable about. And as Terry said, it doesn't have to be related to your profession. You could be knowledgeable in something totally unrelated that's still of value. 
And then you start thinking, okay, if I'm in this profession, what are maybe five questions that people ask me about all the time that I can easily answer? That's content. So for example, I did a workshop recently for an insurance company and they're all insurance agents. And I would say to them, okay, why should I choose you over one of the other 50 people in this room? You can't just tell me you're an insurance agent. You have to tell me what it is that you do as an insurance agent that's done differently or better than the person sitting beside you. So that clarity is really important. And so when I was sharing tips on how to build their brand or content that they could be sharing, I asked the same question. You guys get asked questions all the time, no matter what profession that you're in. Write down those questions because those are the answers. You have the answers already to the content. And then for those that are afraid of video, like I'm also very like video is a new thing for me. And I mean, Terry knows this about me as well. Video is very, it's awkward, right? Especially online because essentially like right now I'm talking to myself on the screen, even though I'm talking to you guys. And before I do something like a live on Instagram, I actually have to do a mental countdown where I kind of psych myself up to go online to speak. And I do that because I know that I'm going to positively impact the life of even one person by jumping on that video. However, to start off, you don't have to jump on video. You can use other people's content. So for example, on LinkedIn, when I just started using the platform, I didn't have the time to sit down and write a long article about personal branding. I can do that now. I've actually done two recently. But instead, I would search online for articles on personal branding from like entrepreneur.com or Forbes or Inc. that I thought would be of value to my, my audience. And then I reshare it. So you can do the same on Instagram. If you can figure out what your audience wants to hear or how you can add value based on your profession, you can borrow other people's content and repost, of course, tag them and give them their credit and reshare information because it still helps to position you as a thought leader or an expert. And then you put your comments on that post as well so that you're also contributing to the conversation and not just resharing someone's information. So that's a very simple way to start. And Another way, and I'll just say one more thing before we switch back to Kerry, is that you have to start with your profile pages. Can someone go on your profile right now and easily identify what you do based on your picture, birth, based on your headline statement, or that's a little summary underneath, based on the pictures that they see on your Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn profile? What information is there that actually tells someone what you do? And a lot of times we get caught up with putting our job titles that doesn't necessarily tell someone what we actually do. Thank you, Naomi. You know, and I think, whoa, yes, I see the big like, Go, Terry. <laughs> I'm just going to jump in based on the questions that you asked. I thought Naomi did a very good wrap up. Um, when it comes to building your own brand, what it really means is that you are making the conscious decision, you're making a calculated conscious decision to bet on yourself. You cannot be looking at this destination saying, I want to be there, and you don't want to actually put in the work. But before you put in the work, you actually have to get over that big word that everybody knows is fear. What is what is what a lot of people are caught up about why they don't use social media as much or they don't do video as much is not that they're bad at what they do. They're afraid of failure. They're afraid of looking stupid. They're afraid of being ridiculed and being critiqued. That's the reason why a lot of persons don't get out there. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't do it, somebody else will. And you will always be that person sitting down there saying, I could have done a better job than that. Well, if you think you can do a better job, then you actually have to get over that fear and you have to try it. So how does it work? You're doing video for the first time. You don't have to speak for an hour. Just try it. Just do it. I dare you. Do it. And actually say in the video, guys, this is my first time doing a video. I am so nervous, but here goes. I am guaranteeing you. The majority of the persons who come in are a part of your audience. They're going to be cheerleaders. They're going to be cheering you on because they know what it is like to be there. 
But I guarantee you, if you bet on yourself and you try to do that one video and you keep on practicing after, real life, after a while, you realize I could have done this a long time. For my introverts, you might be saying, well, I'm, a sh I'm shy, I'm an introvert. I can't do what all of these media personalities and PR persons doing. Let me explain something to you. You cannot define yourself or restrict or limit yourself based on a label. I am an introvert. To be more specific, I am an INTJ. Here is how I have built my brand to work for me. I am bad at networking. I absolutely hate going into public spaces and being like, hey, my name is Tara Curl. Here's my card. So what do you do? I'm extremely uncomfortable doing that because I am, in fact, an introvert. What do I do? I build my brand online. And when you find that you build your brand online and you become an expert or a thought leader in that space, people come to you. Understand that that removes a lot of the barriers of you having to go out and convince people to get to know you. It actually works in the favor of the introverts to have people come to you based on what you're putting on your, your platform. And building a personal brand does not mean oversharing. It doesn't mean that you have to share everything to show that you're authentic. Use your discretion and show only that is going to give value to your audience. Show your personality. It doesn't mean that you need to overshare everything that is private. I'm done. Boy, right, here you, go. you ladies are just ministering. I saw a comment here that I think kind of summarizes some of the feedback so far from Talent Box on Facebook. Ladies, this session is too good. Oh my God, when you have some salt there. I love it. Terry, can I add one thing to what to what Terry said? Yeah, That's because we need to move on because we've been barely scratching the surface yet. Is stifling. Like, so Terry knows that public speaking is not my favorite thing. And I literally just started doing that a year and a half ago. To this day, which I tell people all the time, I mean, my armpits start to sweat every single time. I could be speaking to 10 people or 200 people. It's the same reaction. But because I know that I'm giving value and I know what I'm talking about and I know some person, even one person is going to leave that room with a great takeaway, that's what gives me the courage to do it. So don't look on us and just think, like Terry hates staged photo shoots. Like I had no idea until I did a photo shoot with Terry and I was like, who is this person? Who is this person? This is not Terry Carell Reed. So we all have our things, but we have to understand that in order to serve our audience in the best possible way, we have to find a way to get over it, right? So my armpits will still sweat and Terry will still hate to be, do photo shoots, but we do it anyway because we know that our audience will appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing that, you know, and, and I'm, I'm glad for the words of encouragement, especially for the introverts, you know, who, you know, not sure how do I put myself out there. And there was another question about creating content. And I know I think Terry's point, you know, I just want to stick with Terry for a minute because what she would have shared kind of segue, segues into what the next question would have been, which is, you know, how do I strategically or tactically leverage my offline brand persona online right uh -huh. and i think it's a great question because especially when you talk about generating content a lot of where your content is going to come from is actually in your offline life things that you do every day experiences you have encounters that you may have so how do i do that exactly that's a very good question. And I'll tell you, um, about maybe a year and a half ago, I was terrible at that. I go to my jobs, I do my job very well, excellently, and then I would leave. I wouldn't capture a photo, I wouldn't document, I wouldn't create, but the persons who were in the room would know that I was there and that I did a good job. Except for if I don't have anything to show for it, and if I don't speak about it, then how do people even know that it took place, right? Remember, we're talking about building a brand. So this is what I started to do. I would go to the events and I would now start to document what it is I'm doing because we don't all have time to create. So now I get a photo of myself at the lectern or maybe I am scribbling notes, but I'm clearly doing what it is I do every single day. When I go online now, what I will do is I will post about the event, but I really don't talk about the event. I'm not a hard seller. People don't like being sold to. They like when you tell stories. So chances are you will never see me say, book Terry. 
I was awesome. I was great. I am going to talk about something that took place at that particular event with the photo or the video that shows me doing what I do. Here's where the magic happens. The magic happens because persons who were at the event, they start to come on to say, we were there. You were amazing. Oh my gosh. What that is, is social currency. Those are micro testimonials from other persons who are experiencing your brand in real time. Then you engage. Thank you so very much. What now happens is that other persons who are on the outskirts saying, boy, I wish I was at that event. Why is this important? There's some people who are in your audience who are going to be following your, your journey and they're going to be clients who are going to be booking me. There are others who are going to fall on the outside who may not be clients, no, but what they're going to do is when they're in their meetings at their office, what's going to happen is they're going to say, hey, we think Terracurrent might be great for this opportunity. And that is how I started to build out my brand. So it was never a hard sell. I had to have my, my file, my photo or my video that would help me visualize or to help my audience to see what it is I do. And then eventually what would start happening is that the conversation starts happening about how I dress, how I take my, my, my clients' colors into consideration. And that helps a lot. So what I'm saying is do not take for granted the work that you do. What we need to start doing is documenting it behind the scenes how do you process before you get into a job those things people actually care about and are things that can bring value to your audience so that's what i do across my brands thank you terry and um i just want to wrap this section because we're going into our final section where we're talking about monetizing now so we even have more juicy stuff coming guys we're seeing the feedback and we thank you absolutely loving this session this is some good information very informative i hope you're texting and you're whatsapping and you're tagging your family and your friends to log on to this conversation let's be generous bring them in because we're still heading into our final section in a, in a couple of minutes talking about monetizing but back to naomi because we're talking naomi about how do we use our offline brand persona to leverage and provide content for the for the brand as we are online right what's the biggest misconception that people have about their offline brand persona and their own because sometimes you see somebody online and when you meet them in person <clears throat> sometimes it don't really line up so <laughs> terry we look terry is on the floor so you know um Naomi, what's the biggest misconception because we're all about authenticity right so I think the biggest misconception is that people think that they can have multiple personalities as it relates to the brands, and they cannot. You are one person. So as you said, you can't present yourself as this person when you meet people in person, and then you're somebody completely different online on Instagram, or you're this lovely put together professional on LinkedIn, and then on Instagram, you are not that lovely put together person. It's still you at the end of the day. And that's why I tell people I don't really see a differentiation between a personal and professional brand brand and on and offline brand. It's the experience that someone has when they interact with you, whether it's directly, whether it's online or whether it's through a third party. So you have to be always showing up in the way. So my friend Angeline said it best, dress the way, Angeline, dress the way you want to be addressed. And I think that is the same for just showing up. You should be showing up the way that you want to be addressed in all of your different settings, whether it's on or offline. So, for example, I had an incident once in my company where someone had applied to work for me. Um, lovely young lady in the interview. Um, resume was great. But I'm in PR. I actually represent other people's brands. That's what that's the business. Of, that's the nature of our business. We are the, the, the gatekeepers for other people's brands. So I have to ensure that whoever is we're bringing into our company, one is a good representation of the Garrett Communications brand that we've already created and established. Two, you're a good representation of my brand because the company is called Garrett Communications, which is Naomi Garrick. And three, that you actually would be a good representative for the companies that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis. 
So I have to check your social media. So I'll say that right now. If anybody wants to work at Garrett Communications, that's great. But I need to be able to see what the rest of the world is seeing online about you. And when I went on her social media profiles, I almost could not believe that this was the same young lady that sat in front of me in this interview. It was a totally different character and not in a positive way, not in some in a way that would add value to my organization. And so that young lady did not get the opportunity to work with us. And the reality is that individuals that are seeking jobs right now, and I'm a small company. So imagine those big institutions, right, that you want to work for that have these HR departments and their IT departments. They're absolutely going to be checking your online media profiles because they have to ensure that you are who you say you are. That's why even when you're applying for US visa now, you need to also tell them your social media platforms that you use and your handles. Because you cannot write that you're this wonderful person on paper and you're someone totally different that the rest of the world is seeing. So you have to be very aware of how you're showing up and how you're representing yourself in the best possible way on the various platforms. Guys, it's very easy to go through and do a social media cleanse there are things that you may have posted five years ago and you don't remember. I don't remember what I posted last week. So sometimes you have content that maybe you thought was cool or relevant at the time that really is not a good reflection of you and your brand. It's okay to go back and just delete, 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 delete. And this is what I tell students when I talk to them. I'm like, listen, if you are not comfortable with your grandmother, your mother, or your potential boss going on your Instagram page or your platforms, then that means that you have content that does not need to be there because it's not bringing value to you and your brand. So don't be afraid to, as, as it's on the screen, spring clean your socials. Do a social media cleanse and delete what's not relevant to who you are right now in this moment. Thanks, Naomi. And you know, that's a great point because it's kind of controversial because a lot of people are like, well, the company shouldn't be looking at my social media because that's my personal life and not my work life. And the reality is, again, that it's your personal brand, it's your reputation and the company, depending on what their particular brand positioning and values are, your brand may not be aligned. And you know, that's okay. If your brand is not aligned, then that's okay. That's not the company. For you, but we post things on Twitter and stuff, and then they we find out that they work for this company and then they lose their job because guess what? As I said, you are the brand manager for the company as well, and they have to protect their brand too. So I just want to add two things like two things. One, we always tell this to people in workshops and students you don't have to post everything you don't have to post every emotion every anger you know every everything that you're feeling does not necessarily have to be posted on social media take a step back number two one of the biggest misconceptions with online because i think naomi did that part very well another misconception of people online is that somehow whether they page private or public they figure that because nobody really don't know them you know it's only going to stay in this little spot I think people keep on forgetting that we've seen nobodies, people who are virtually unknown, tweet and end up on Ellen. Or they do an Instagram post and they end up on Oprah. Or you do a post and you lose your scholarship or you lose your job. Please understand that online is not the space in your living room. It is literally giving anyone who has the power to have a mobile device eyes into your world. And if you do not want to give people that power to judge you because that is what people are going to do, that's all we have to do. That's all we have to go off of. So what we're asking for people to do is use the discretion, don't post everything, and remember that your platform is seen all over, whether you think it private or not. Right. And, and I think that's a great message. Sorry, Naomi? You know, I was just saying, it's really just to be mindful, to just think before you share. That's yeah. really... Let's yeah, take a minute. yeah and, I, and I think that's a great point to close this section before we move into monetizing because, I mean, even Terry, you know, just to acknowledge that, Terry, you clearly define what aspects of your personal life you share and not. So for those who follow you, they, they can figure out you're in a relationship. 
but you don't post his face as far as I can tell on no. pages, you know, no. it's not his business. So for those who may know you and see you socially, they may pick up that you're together, but you don't post in there and that's your choice and that's okay. You choose and you draw the lines and the boundaries. And I think people need to be happy that they do have that power to choose and to create those boundaries. About and, to and to cultivate their own audience. People forget that you have the power to control your narrative. And when you control your narrative, you naturally attract and cultivate your, your community. So my community is like, all right. We know she's happy, and as long as she's happy, we're happy. But they're not trying to pry because I've taken the time to really audit and make sure that I've cultivated the, the community that I want. Absolutely. Thank you for that. So we're moving into the home stretch. We're talking about money. Yes, yes. It's all about the, 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 the rent. Okay, so we're paying some bills. And so it's, it's again, yes, so you're building your personal brand. So for those of us, you know, who are, you know, desirous of staying in the employed space, we covered that in terms of, okay, yeah, we're building a personal brand because your reputation is important and it can lead to other opportunities. There are some people who actually want to monetize their personal brand that they're building online in a real way beyond just using it to find the next job, you know, in an employed space, and that's fine too. So let me start with Terry, because Terry, you certainly are using your personal brand online as well to, to, to make money, right? mm -hmm. it's what it is. And it's good to hear from you definitely, because there's a lot of misconception, well, me never win Miss Jamaica. So yeah, of course, Terry Carell can make money because she was Miss Jamaica and she hosted she said, Rising Stars and da 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 da. So, Terry, how did you do it? How did you start? And certainly for the average Joe, mm -hmm. you know, what are kind of the top three things that we should be doing or starting to do to begin to monetize our personal brand online? Right. And I, and I appreciate that. And I can understand why it would seem like some of us have a competitive advantage. But then I would raise the point that there's so many people who are on TV that don't have big brands, that don't have good personal brands. So it means that even if you are on a channel and you are recognizable, even you are vulnerable if you're not literally being intentional about what it is you do. Secondly, even though I'm, even, I'm on um, Digicel Rising Stars, for example, my audience grows exponentially outside of that moment that I'm there. And that is because of the content I put out outside of the platforms that I'm on. So this is what I started to do. I started to become very intentional about everything that I posted. Everything that I post, even if it's a joke with my, myself and my daughter, it became a joke. I mean, it, it was intentional. So everyone knew that my core competency, for example, was TV hosting and event hosting. Persons who knew me in our close circles knew that I was a powerful speaker. Jamaica didn't know that. They knew that I could speak well and that I could host well. But whenever it came to conversations and, and, and figuring out who they wanted to be a potential speaker, I probably would not come in that list because my, my brand was built around event or, or, or TV, media hosting. The moment I got up on my, my phone and I started doing mini talks, five minute talks, eight minute talks, and I started to post them. They started to go viral. They ended up in WhatsApp group, CEO group, manager group, church group, parents group, all sorts of groups. And guess what happened? I started to do that consistently. Guess what started to happen? People started to invite me to now be a speaker. They wouldn't have seen that if I did not put that particular talent that I had on display. When I jumped onto LinkedIn in May, nobody knew me on LinkedIn because I wasn't using LinkedIn. I was a nobody. So even though you might have a little bit of recognition in your country, if you're trying to really build your brand into international waters, you're like anybody else. You're a dot on the map. Nobody cares. The moment I started to do my content around little mini talks, things that you know I want to speak about or I want to address, the events that I did, the takeaways that I got, way things started to happen. I went to Grenada in November, went to Singapore in December, Barbados, Bahamas. A lot of these people who never heard of me, never seen me in the hosting capacity were reaching out because of what they saw. 
And then when they started to go across my other platforms, they said, oh, she does other things. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're only going to show one side of you, then really and truly you'll only attract persons for that one thing. The moment you actually start to intentionally put work and consistency behind showing something else, the feedback comes. But if you don't do it, and if you don't do it consistently, it's not going to happen. So LinkedIn, 10 months later, I can't tell you how many webinars I've been on. I was just on a live the other day with other experts, one professor from Harvard. Why am I there? How did I even get there? It's because people who never knew me started to see my content. They saw my content of value. And so they invited me into their spaces. And anyone can do it if they bet on their brand and they start to put the work consistently behind it. Thanks, Terry. So basically, the big nugget is that you put yourself out there. You put your talent and your skills on display. And as you said, even though you're Mr. Jamaica and you're probably popular, yeah, you are popular in Jamaica, you got international opportunities by just, again, putting it out there. And I remember when you came on to LinkedIn and started out. I remember. And, you know, you did these videos with no makeup on your face. And I'm like, okay, Terry's in LinkedIn. Let's see how this is going to go because you were used to you on Instagram. But wow. I mean, it's like, as you said, 10 months later, it's been awesome. Putting your skills on display. I love that. And I think that is really where you have to start in terms of making yourself available for monetization opportunities. I mean, Naomi, just to switch to you in this monetization discussion. So you're an entrepreneur, right? And and of course, you're driving work to your business uh, personally as well. I mean, how do you do that in that context, you know, in terms of generating demand and, and money for your business and the field that you're in? So, so what's interesting for me is that for the agency, Garrett Communications, which I really should be covering my face, but I haven't really spent a lot of time building that brand online. We know who our ideal audience is, and thank God um, our company just turned 10 in October, and our audience finds us. We, we're very clear on identifying who our ideal audience is, and we attract our ideal audience. Um, but what has been happening with me over the last two years is when I started to venture off into personal branding. So it's not something I've been doing forever. Literally, I launched my book in 20. 17 2018 right march 2018 so we're two years in now um and that's what catapulted everything for me as it relates to personal branding i've never advertised personal branding anything related to me and personal branding has been what i share on my social media platforms and because of that sharing on social media i've gotten speaking engagements locally and internationally i like terry i'm invited to speak on webinars with people that I don't even know. Um, I've sold more workbooks because of what people see online. If I do a live, if I do a session, then people are like, oh, you have a workbook. Sometimes I think people just know that I have a workbook, but they don't. But it's because I'm putting myself out there and I'm sharing and I'm giving a lot of value, 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 value all the time instead of asking or promoting that, hey, let me be your personal branding coach. It always leads to other opportunities. And even for someone that watches me that may not need my service right now, because I put myself out there, they can recommend me to someone else that might need my service. So that thing about the social proof, positioning yourself as a thought leader or as an expert is really, really important. So if you're doing that, and as Terry said, showing up consistently online in the platforms that you choose and offering to solve problems, sometimes you do this for free. A lot of us are afraid to give away our services for free, um, not realizing that the more that you do that, the more comes back to you. And this happens to me all the time. So what has happened with my personal branding, um, my personal brand as the PR chick, which now people just know that I had a, I had a situation or not a situation, but a, an example where I had ordered a pizza from Domino's and the pizza man came. He was super late. I'm not normally a miserable person. So I was instead just joking with him about foolishness. And when he was leaving, he said, all right, then PR chick. And I was just like, wait, what? He's like, you're the PR chick, right? I'm like, yes. He's like, I said, how do you know that? I read the newspapers, miss. 
So that thing about your brand, you never know who is watching you and why they need it is so important. But for me, I've been also using this, this great online space to do things that I've never thought of doing before. So I have a 14 day build your brand challenge where I've created just very short videos, maybe two to three minute videos with digital worksheets that someone can go online, pay like a very small fee and do this 14, 14 day challenge to build a brand. Or I've created maybe eight eBooks, three of which I'm giving away for free. So if you go on at the PR chick, click the link free brand building tools, you can download your tools on how to build your LinkedIn profile, build your personal brand for free because I believe in offering value. But I have eBooks that are for sale that you actually pay for content. So what happens is online gives us all these opportunities to sell, not just directly to who is in our space here in Kingston or Jamaica, but to the rest of the world, because there are people all over the world that needs your services. But you have to start by letting people know what you do, what you do well, the problems that you solve. And then you look at what can I sell that can help? Maybe I could do an online course that gives someone step to step, step by step directions on how to do something. Maybe I can simply jump on Canva, which is a free online platform to create content and do an ebook, six pages, download it for free. So there are lots of ways that you can be making money online and either giving away things for free or you're charging a very small fee. But because so many people have access to it, you end up making a lot of money in a very short space of time. So there are lots of easy ways and then there's more extensive ways that you can be building your brand online and making money from it. Thank you so much, Naomi. And I'd love to just hop back to Terry real, real quick because Terry, you are the one woman shop kind of a scenario. And earlier you would have shared about how you, you're pivoting. So now as an online brand strategist, what are your specific monetization activities that you're doing? Because I think it can also resonate, particularly for some of our viewers who may have lost a job and are looking now to independently in and of themselves use a personal brand online to make money. What specific money-making strategies are you using right now? Right, and I, and I actually, I touched on it earlier, but I think it's also, and this is why it goes back to, you can't just be one-dimensional. Because if you were able to start sharing with persons or showing persons your expertise in different areas, then when you decide to pull levers, like the ones I'm going to explain, then it will come as a shock. So, so for me, over the years, what I've gotten are lots of questions uh, from my community about public speaking. People have asked me constantly if I would do workshops, if I coach for public speaking. People have asked me for etiquette classes. People have even asked me about LinkedIn because they saw me jump on LinkedIn and they saw me do my thing in LinkedIn. So now people are asking, well, how, how do I go about you know jumping on LinkedIn? And so I realized that I actually have a lot of experience and a lot of practical experience. Things that I had to try, I had to fail, I had to figure out which is the best way to learn. And so now, as Naomi mentioned, I'm thinking about going into classes. Persons have actually told me that they would rather do online classes to me, especially those persons who might not have been able to travel to a seminar or a web or, or, or a, a, a physical space. They've now asked me for, for classes or courses on in those spaces, even media. People have asked me about media, building confidence um, and video being comfortable in front of the video and storytelling. So persons have told me where they would like me to start my classes and that's what I'm going to start doing. Thank you, Terry. And one final question before we do a quick housekeeping matter and then come back with our final nuggets from each of you. Um, Naomi, just wanted to raise this question for you in particular. Um, so now in the COVID crisis, of course, we find a lot of online brands and influencers and thought leaders like yourselves sharing a lot of content covid crisis management related type content and actually you could say that's part of what jmb is doing now as well through this series of go better live webinars do you see that particular strategy as being useful right now naomi as far as building your personal brand and maybe if not monetizing it now because maybe you know it's probably not a good thing to charge for certain things at this point in time but you di disseminating free covid crisis management content now with a view to making money later um so what i would say is 
if you have something to add to this space that's of relevance, share it. That's a great way to enter the online space if you weren't there before. Um, and see how that can be repurposed content as well. And I'll give an example. I recently wrote an article for the Jamaica Observer on pretty much how to build a business brand online. And that's something that's going to be it's on their online website. And I repurposed it and shared it on LinkedIn as well. And that was one of one of my best posts so far to date on LinkedIn platform. And it's because a lot of people could relate to it right now. Those who are not online need to get online because the rest of the world is online. So if you can use COVID-19 because you can offer value in that space to share something that could be beneficial to other people, that could be actually a great way to jumpstart this brand that you're going to start developing and sharing. But you have to know what you're sharing and that is actually going to be of value. Don't just jump on the COVID-19 bandwagon just because you think, okay, everybody's talking about COVID-19. A lot of people are tired of hearing about COVID-19 as well. So if you can share something that can still bring value that's even not related to COVID-19, that's also a great opportunity right now because some people are overhearing news about COVID-19. So you have an opportunity to not share COVID-19 stuff and to share relevant COVID-19 things. Once it's, you think it's going to add value to your space or to your audience or to someone else's life, now is a great time to jump online because everyone else is doing it. If we go come off of this, this um, webinar right now and hit Instagram, I'm sure there are maybe about 15 different lives happening right now because people don't have a choice and we still want content and we still want information. And so everyone's using this opportunity. But how are you going to stand out from the noise right now by understanding the value that you have and what you can share with your audience because you already know that they need this information from you. And that helps you to give you the confidence to actually jump online too. Thanks for that. Great. Yes, I see that finger, Terry. Terry is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like in class, just two things to add to that, right? And if you're going to jump in the space or maybe you are still in business, um, Please do not have things like COVID-19 sale, 50% off. Please do not try to do some marketing or advertising strategy using COVID-19 sale because that's not really something that's, that, that, that we would recommend at this time. And just to add to what, um, or to reiterate what, what Naomi just said is, nobody wants you to pick up where the news is. You know, we rely on the media houses to tell us how many people are affected and we rely on them. But honestly, I can speak to my platforms. I have seen a spike when I post simply because I am sh I am posting something that is inspirational. It's laughter. It's a light moment. It is something that people can relate to because as Naomi said, Everyone's tired. Everyone is already doom and gloom and despair and pain and anxiety. And so people actually look forward to content that makes them laugh and reminds them that we're in this together, but we're having a good time and we're grateful. I find that if you can also, if you can tap into that space, people will love you for it. But as Naomi said, just make sure that when this is all over, the value doesn't disappear because the COVID-19 has disappeared. How do you now capitalize and retain the people who are now going to come with you in this period? Wonderful. You know what's funny, Terry? I actually, I mean, one of the things I did, which is totally not related to personal branding or anything like that, but when homeschooling started, Lord have mercy, I had to put a sign on my door. I created a COVID-19 sign for my child to let him know that these are all, like these are the five reasons that you can knock on my door. And the first one was you yeah. have COVID-19 symptoms. And I listed what the symptoms were, right? <laughs> and I shared it on Instagram and so many people DM'd me asking, can you send me the template for that? Because I need a sign like that on my door. Did the sign actually work? No, but it was my attempt to have some normalcy in my house. So there are ways, I mean, we have to remember that a lot of people are going through a really, really rough time right now. So you have to be empathetic as well, right? So what it just, it's, and it goes back to just give thought before you share something. Is this gonna help something? Am I being kind? Am I offering value? Am I gonna inspire someone today? As Terry said, am I gonna make them laugh? 
think about what you're posting, why you're posting, and how people will be affected to what you're sharing. If already you think that, oh, this could be touchy or iffy or maybe not, don't share it then, right? Thank you, Naomi. Matt, no, people, blaze up these comments. I mean, this conversation has been fantastic. I mean, I think, you know, we could stay here for easily another two hours and with curfew here, yeah, we certainly could. <laughs> right? But but this has just been a fabulous discussion, you know, and you know, as we talk about, you know, COVID-19 and, and this whole crisis, you know, this is what this conversation is really part of a broader conversation. It's about looking at opportunities and supporting people in navigating. And um, it's been really just wonderful. I just want to deal with just a couple of quick housekeeping matters before we come back to each of our fabulous guests for their final nuggets. The first thing is, guys, is that this session is being recorded so that's awesome so you can watch it again and watch it again some more you can share it with family and friends anybody who you thought this would have been very useful information to have and to hear feel free to share them we're going to be posting it on jmb group jamaica's facebook page twitter insta and instagram and youtube so please feel free to watch right after this is done. It will be available on YouTube almost immediately. And then we'll upload throughout the night to the other platforms. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is that JMMB Goal Getter Live webinars will be continuing next week. Yes, we're going to be right here. We're going to be back with you next week, Tuesday and Thursday, again, with some more great conversations and content to help us all navigate. So next week, Tuesday, I forget which date in April it is, April 20-something, I'm sorry. But next week, Tuesday, you just follow us on social media and you'll get all the deets. Next week, Tuesday, we're going to be talking about budgeting and managing your money. If it's one thing we learn learning out of this COVID thing is that, boy, a lot of us got caught with our pants down, you know, some of us in the choir over here. We're going to be talking about how to budget, how to make the most of that little mickle and how to really get our savings back on track and to be better prepared and to of course keep our financial goals on track so that's next week tuesday 8 30 pm right here again on gmb group jamaica's facebook twitter and youtube platforms then now on thursday we're going to have another gmb go get a live stream where we're going to be ministering to the parents and the guardians where we're going to be talking about trying to navigate this homeschooling thing. I mean, O-M-G. I mean, we're not going to say anymore. We have the parents and the guardians in the building. We know how it is. We're all trying to navigate this new normal. I don't think anybody expects schools to reopen anytime soon, given the rapid fire spread that has now occurred. And so this homeschooling paradigm looks like it's going to be our normal for quite some time. So we're going to bring some people both on the educator side and on the parent side, just to share some ideas about how we can get through this as parents and guardians of kids who we're going to have to be homeschooling in the midst of trying to juggle everything else. So guys, this is where you need to be. Gem and B group, 8.30 PM, link, uh, not LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. See you next week, Tuesday. 8 30 so we're gonna bring it back with lady naomi and lady terry where we're gonna ask them to leave us with what we call the final nugget right the final thought and so i would start off with naomi and ask naomi so i have heard all this great stuff i'm gonna go to sleep i'm gonna dream about it and simmer on it when i wake up tomorrow What's the first thing I need to do to build and or monetize my personal brand? What should be that first item in your view on my to-do list tomorrow morning? I would say take some time to do some introspection and get clarity on who you are, what you think is your unique value, and who you should be communicating that to. Once you have that, you can update your online profiles, all of them. Change your headshot update the content so people know actually what you do and who you serve i would like to add one more thing use this time that you have if you have the extra time to build on your skills if you can i own a company 
I'm a personal branding coach and I'm still taking the time to learn more things. Digital is not going anywhere. So if you need to up level your social media and digital marketing skills, there are a lot of free online courses. I just completed my certification from Google Garage on um, fundamentals of digital marketing, because guess what? I, I know that that's going to help me and it's also going to help my clients, whether it's through personal branding or through direct communications. So use this time to see how can you add more value to your brand so that when you come out of COVID-19, you're coming out with a lot more skills, more clarity, and you understand what you're communicating to your audience. Thank you so much, Naomi. And I think that nugget is actually very applicable. I see somebody here making the point, you know, what if I'm just starting out in the working world? It's the same thing. What do you want to, how do you want to position yourself out there? Get that clarity, set it up, put your profile in place, get your headshot, get your stuff together. I love that. Terry, what's your final nugget? I think you're on mute. Personal. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, so I uh, know did a very good job of the wrap up. Uh, before, take your time. Don't be hard on yourself. This is not an overnight thing. Personal branding journey is an ongoing journey, and you're not going to figure out everything right away. In fact, it is as you go along, you're going to continue tweaking and realizing a lot of awesome things that you didn't even know existed. So because Naomi said that, let me tell you this. Number one, your brand is greater than you would even ever know unless you try. Stop comparing yourself to others. Stop looking at other people lane and focus on your own. When you focus and invest in your lane, you will get to your destination much, much faster. Believe in yourself. We can give you the tools. You can read all the workbooks. You can buy all the eBooks. You can do all of the classes. If you do not take the opportunity to actually believe in yourself, to bet on yourself and, you, and know that you have a talent that can serve your ideal, you have a talent that can serve your ideal client, then it's all for naught. So what I really want people to start doing is believing in themselves as the brands that they can potentially be and put in the work and be consistent and invest in your brand the way you invest in other people's brand. Done. Love that. Love that. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, we're seeing some great questions coming. I know that a lot of them we would have covered. So please, guys, this session is being recorded. Please rewatch it. I'd love you to follow these ladies. Where can we find can send their questions? They can send their questions as well to us individually. Yeah. So Naomi is at the PR chick. That's Instagram, right? And on LinkedIn, what are you, Naomi? Naomi Garrick. Naomi Garrick on LinkedIn and Terry. I'm at Terry Carell, no hyphen, and I'm Terry Carell on um, LinkedIn. Perfect. So please follow them because I know, up to, I think probably today or yesterday, Naomi, you had a, you had a post about a free, free online courses, I think, that are available. So I have free online products. So if you, go, if you click the link on my bio and at the PR chip, it will take you to some free ebooks that I created that you can just download right away right and i think you also shared about some places where even if you want to upscale as you're talking yes. about so there's, time, there's google, google Garage, there's udemy there's hubspot you just search for on free online programs there are so many right now there's even ones for entrepreneurs business basics like everybody's opening up their platforms and giving away content for free because they know that we all need it Absolutely. HubSpot Academy is bomb. HubSpot Academy is where it's at. I'm actually doing a social media certificate at HubSpot right now. All right. So, yeah, guys. So, just Google free online courses, tons of options. Watch this broadcast again. Follow these two awesome ladies on social media because they'll keep the nuggets coming, right? And, guys, I think the key message, too, is just start. You have an awesome brand. There's no need to hide it. Step out there be generous contribute to the world what it is your unique skill sets are and just be bold about it and take that first step we're not playing small for 20. we're not playing small we're not playing right. small for anybody any right. day so it is not an excuse to Double. just stop absolutely Step you know absolutely. Absolutely. we have to pivot and wheel and come again 
Absolutely. We're, we're looking for the opportunities. We're remaining positive. We're going to get through this. And when this is all over, whatever the new normal is, we're going to be ready. And ladies, we just want to thank you guys. Blaze up those comments. Let's see the thank round. You. Thank you. Awesome, awesome ladies. You know, JMMB, it is our pleasure to continue to bring these Goal Getter live stream webinars. We will be taking a break this Thursday. Yes, somebody said, what happened to Thursday? So sorry, we're not coming on this Thursday. But guess what? We've done about four or five webinars already. So please go back, have a look. We've been covering all kinds of topics to help you navigate. And we'll continue to do so next week, Tuesday and Thursday, 8.30 p.m. Same place, same time. Follow JMB Group Jamaica to get your notifications. Thank you again, Terry and Naomi. We really appreciate your time. Oh, my goodness. It was awesome. And information. It's been wonderful. And JMMB group continuing to stand, coming from a place of love, standing for the best interest of all. Yeah. We love you guys. And we thank you again for following us. And we invite you to continue to stay safe. And we wish for you the best for yourself, your business, and your, and your loved ones. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Bye, guys. Take care.